think of the curve of the bow to do sort of banana motion or smiling face rather than straight not sound. Do you know what's a pendulum? Do you know guys what's a pendulum? Yeah? It's like, this is a pendulum. If I hold the tip of the bow, this is a pendulum. So if I move the tip of the bow just a little bit, the, the bottom of it will move like 20 times more. Yeah, that's just the nature of it, physics. So imagine that your bow arm is a pendulum, meaning if you want to move this banana stroke here, you're actually making sure that your shoulder is doing the motion. So instead of sitting and blocking your shoulder and playing, activate your shoulder and let the rest of it react to it. So the creator of the sound is your shoulder. Think about it, try it. Bravo, really good. What do you think? You like it? Really good. Now, the creator of sound is your shoulder. What is the articulator of the sound? Or what is, let's call it the cello tongue? Okay, which would be the wrist? The tongue is the wrist? Try it. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. What in life, besides cello, you do with your wrists? Do you ever activate your wrist? Like you take your iPhone, do you like, <laughs> do you write emails with your wrist? I mean, it's, it's painful to demonstrate. Let me tell you a secret, you don't. There's not, we don't really move the wrist. The wrist is a connector. The wrist connects two parts, the creator and the articulator, which is your finger. Say once, good morning. Good morning. Now take your tongue and just drop it to the bottom of your mouth and say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. We can do it. We don't even think about it, but our tongue is like, whenever we speak. So your cello tongue are your fingers. Your fingers are articulating the banana motion of your shoulder. So if I have a frozen hand and I, do you hear my sound? Now I can be, you're really sensitive and very musical. So you try, if you really try, but you, you, you speak without the tongue. Yeah? Take your heart out for a second. <laughs> with your right hand. You can do it with us, guys, if you want, because you're all chanting. Now, your heart is still pumping, okay? So, it's pumping. In, out. Let's just say it. In, out. Say it with me. In, out. In, out. Now, the five fingers are like veins, yeah? They pump the blood inside and then push it out to the body, okay? In, the main vein of this heart would be your thumb. The thumb leads the motion in and out. Now, instead of in, don't stop. We're not done yet. Instead of in, say down, up. Down, up. No, put it back. <laughs> hang, hang on an imaginary back of a chair. Good. Now, you see how beautiful the connector is, the wrist? So if I move the creator, I just shake my elbow and shoulder, the reactor, it reacts to it, yeah? And now I need to learn how to pump my cello heart. So do the same pumping, in, out, in, out. Now say down, up, down, up. Now put the bow in the middle on the D string, hold it with the left hand. Do the same thing, hang, hang on an imaginary chair. Check the creator of the sound, your elbow and shoulder. Check that it's like a jellyfish connected to the articulator and pump your articulator. Good, excellent. Now, as I said, the main vein of this is your thumb. Your thumb, when you play, is like this. From beginning to end, I have a good position to see it when you play. So it's like having a blocked vein pumping blood to the heart. Do you know what happens to a person when they have that? Start to 
take that operation. Emergency room, right away, he takes his vein out, you take one from the leg, put it in, okay, so the blood can flow. So what you have to do first, after recognizing this, is to bend your thumb, to play with a bent thumb. So now, put, hold the bow and bend your thumb gently. So you see the first joint, this one, is always active, yes. Now do this, do the pumping like we did before, do the pumping. But don't pump to this position, ever, because again, you don't do it in life. We don't ever do anything with a thumb like this. No phone, no email, no eating, no. It's always bent. So it should be bent when you play cello, because it's much harder than eating and writing emails. <laughs> yeah? So put your thumb, bend it. Now, try to pump it in, out, in, out, in, out. Excellent. Now, take your thumb and second finger, and for now we're going to call it the cello ring. Yes, like a ring. Yeah? But on the cello, instead of touching the tip of the second, we're going to touch the first joint area. Because when we play, that's going to be our connection point between thumb and two, the two strongest fingers we have. So take the cello ring and hold your bow at the tip. Very gently with the thumb and the second finger and relax all the other fingers and do like a grandpa clock. Do you know what's a grandpa clock? Or a pendulum. Just move your bow through your thumb and second finger, but bend your thumb so your thumb becomes active. Your thumb starts the most, yes. Excellent. Now it's very easy to do because we only have this much weight of bow to deal with. Now, so you can do it every day, it's a great exercise. Now, middle of the bow. Same thing, cello ring, bend your thumb, relax all, great. Now just activate the pendulum. It's a little harder because you have more stick to deal with, but the motion is really important. It will be much harder in the frog, so you better practice. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Good. Good. Now, we do the same thing. We take the thumb and two. Thumb goes to exactly where you put it, and the two on the silver part, around the silver part, so they become a ring. Now, because it's so heavy, we're going to add a finger. We're going to add, add a triangle finger, the pinky. So we're creating a, a extremely important triangle between pinky, second finger, and thumb. Guys, do you know what's Play-Doh? If you take a, a ball of Play-Doh and you hold it with those three fingers, you want to make a mark. Not hold, mark on it. That's how you hold the ball, those three fingers. Now, can you do this windshield wiper? See? But with my thumb, second, no, but lift the, lift the ring finger. Lift the ring finger, the fourth finger. Yes, yeah, it's, your tongue is not activated. Do you know, God forbid, if you have, not you, you, we're all young, but if you have a stroke, some people when they have a stroke, they forget how to speak because they have neurological problems. So they go to rehab. And in rehab, they teach them exactly what I'm doing now with you, but for the tongue. They teach them to use their tongue so they can speak again. They forget how to do it. If you will be able to activate those three fingers, yeah, so I, I just show you a few exercises, circle, and I promise you we're almost in the place of actually playing Bach. <laughs> yeah, so this is not for one minute or one day. Uh, I always recommend my students take an iPad pencil or a pencil you sit in class, you're bored, hold it with the three fingers and play. Play, play, play with it. Yeah, so you learn to activate. For instance, one of the ones I like is try to scratch your back with your bow. Can you do that? Holding with the three fingers and activate your thumb. That's the jig of the, the first two. Exactly. Now, put it on the cello. <laughs> now try to play first the Christmas song, as we did before with the pendulum, but try to add 
this pumping string. So remember the down, up. Something is moving, it's good, but I need your thumb to do down, up, down. Uh, do it really slow. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna sound scratchy now. Look. Yeah, you remember the wrist is hanging, so don't try to do it with the wrist. Pump the fingers. The thumb. Just think of your thumb. Yes, yes. Go for it. Good. Now, the best exercise for this, really the best, is a prelude of this week. You take your bow, you put it literally under the silver part, right here, and you play all separate. So you're going to activate the cello tongue for string crossing and up and down. So again, it sounds terrible, but. I'm not moving my arm at all. You can even take a quarter and put it on your on your wrist and try to keep it there without falling. Try one. But exactly opposite. So down, up. But but but, but your thumb, they can see it. Your thumb is like this. Now it's not. Open, open. Okay, so ex it's experiment with it, but it's really much easier. Now, try the Bach. Without pressure. Can you just do the first two notes? chicken wing. You know, this motion for cellist is so important for sound. You play. You play. It's glued to the string. Can you try? With the, with the elbow and shoulder. Yes! Bravo! Good. So that's a quality of sound. Try now from beginning. So this circular motion, like a wing of a chicken. Yes. Say it's not nice sound. They can say I don't like the style. 